you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at auto cell sizing and explore its configuration options to give you an idea of how to interpret uh, what's going on when you're using ACS in your environment. Let's get started. So we're going to jump into smart zone here to take a look at this. Um, I am going to be looking at it from a smart zone perspective. You can enable ACS through Unleashed and then use some of these CLI commands that we're going to be looking at in a little bit uh, on Unleashed as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually go under our access points just to give you an idea of what this environment looks like. So uh, under demo domain one, team zone, uh, I do have two access points. You can see that they are really only doing five gigahertz and they're actually on the same channel. So what I'm looking for is to uh, do some co-channel decreasing of transmit power. Um, so the first thing that we need to do is actually enable ACS. I'm going to go ahead and do that just at the zone level here by clicking on the pencil and going under my radio options and just toggling auto cell sizing here to enable. Oh, and it rolled away from me. So enable, and, and you notice once we enable that here, we no longer can manually adjust the power. We are leaving that up to the ACS system to do that. So uh, with that with that configuration made to the zone, I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. Great. So that was simple. Auto cell sizing is enabled, um, but what's it what's it actually doing, and how can we take a look at under the hood and and kind of see what it's what it's configured to do uh, for the next part what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to the AP CLI and uh, run some commands just to give us some more insight okay so here we are logged into the AP or one of the APs that we enabled ACS on uh, the first thing we're going to do is just do a git wlan list just so we can see all of the networks that we're kind of interested in looking at uh, I am going to be looking at this from just the 5 gigahertz perspective as we saw those were the only radios that were enabled and I'm just going to pick uh, WLAN 33 so our guest open network is the one um, that we're going to focus in on for this particular one uh, the first thing I want to do though is I want to uh, go through some of the settings so I'm just going to choose uh, I'm going to type the command set auto cell uh, whoop and hit tab and this shows up all the different uh, configuration options for this so as we just kind of go through these well, we can enable and disable that uh, from the AP level uh, wouldn't recommend using that here because it will be overwritten by what uh, smart zone is configured to do so if we disabled it here eventually it would get enabled again um, the RX cell so the ACS can do transmit uh, cell sizing as well as receive cell sizing so um, if you want to enable that further we could do that uh, through the CLI level we can also set the debug level um, 0 to 7. I actually did set the debug level on this and we'll verify that com configuration here in a second just because I want to be able to look at some of the log messages that occur uh, with these neighbor exchanges. Uh, and then the timer, the, uh, the timer, the auto cell size run timer. This is telling us uh, the interval uh, on how, how often the TX power level is going to change. By default, this is 300 seconds. And again, we'll look at what the configuration on this uh, particular system is uh, after we run through these options. And then our neighbor update timer. So that specifies how often to send information to neighboring APs. Uh, and it is a default of 60 seconds. Uh, we can then set up on-demand scanning. So on-demand scanning is for uh, environments where there is a lot of noise uh, and we want to be able to scan on-demand. Um, this is disabled by default and it is ha it happens to be disabled here as well. Uh, the next option, we have co-channel neighbor threshold. So this is the target RSSI threshold for the strongest co-channel neighbor. So what's going to happen is our AP will attempt to drop its transmit power until it matches that co-channel neighbor threshold. Uh, by default, this is negative 85 dBm. Um, and that again is, is only for uh, neighbors on the same channel. The neighbor RSSI threshold is the same thing, only you are channel independent. You are not trying to target a specific channel. You are going to look uh, at uh, the strongest neighbor regardless of channel. Um, and again, the, uh, the default for that is also negative five dBm. Uh, we can then move down to the use all channel enable disable. So which channels are we going to use to calculate this? Um, are we going to use all of them? Um, or are we only going to consider 
the uh, co-channel neighbors. So when it is disabled, which is default, it is only considering co-channel neighbors, so neighbors on the same channel. And when it is enabled, it will consider all neighbors. Reg- uh, I'm sorry, it will consider all neighbors regardless of the channel. Uh, and then the next setting is the TX power drop floor. This tells us how much, uh, how many dBs the AP is willing to decrease its power to try to reach the RSSI threshold that we defined. Uh, by default, uh, in this release that I'm running, it's 9, so I can go down 9 dB. Uh, and the same thing with the receive sensitivity drop floor. Um, we can define how far we want to go um, to try to match uh, from a tr- uh, receive side as well. So one thing to note with the uh, with the the drop percentage or the drops that we are going to perform, uh, it's going to do one dB drop every cycle. So right now our, our update is, is 300 seconds. So to get the full nine, we'd have to wait 45 minutes. Um, it increases power uh, quicker than that though. So if it needs to boost power, it's going to do that 3 dB, 3 dB per cycle uh, versus the 1 dB on the drop. So uh, the next thing I want to do kind of is look at what our configuration is. So if I do get auto cell and then WLAN 33, we're going to take a look at some. So here's our configuration. So we've enabled um, tr- uh, auto cell sizing. We do not have receive uh, cell sizing enabled. Our interval is 300 sec- seconds. Our na- neighbor interval is 20 seconds. And our thresholds are both set to negative 85 dB. So um, Regardless of which one, uh, this happens to be co-channel uh, that we're trying to do because both of these guys are on the same channel. But negative uh, 85 dB is what we're trying to hit. Uh, we're not going to reach that just because I know how close these APs actually are. But I want to at least show you what what's going to happen from a power uh, transmit perspective. So uh, we are not using all channels. We are only using the channels defined by co-channels. Uh, we do have background scan that's required for this, and it's doing 20-second intervals. We are not doing on-demand, and again, our uh, TX power floor level uh, is 9 dB, so it's going to drop up to 9 dB. Additionally, uh, we can see under our radio state, so we're on channel 161. Uh, this is a 80 megahertz channel, so it is a channel with four. And we see our TX power of 42 and our TX power offset of one. Um, so this TX power number is actually a rep- representing 0.5 dB. So right now, the TX power is actually 21 dB. DB. Uh, I don't. I don't know exactly why it's coded like that. But if you're just looking at that number from a raw 42 uh, DB perspective, things aren't going to line up. You have to realize that this TX power field is a half DB increment, uh, and, and our TX power offset is one. So we have already just started detecting a neighbor, and we have already begun. Uh, turning some power down. So we've gone down one step since I've enabled this. Uh, And if we keep looking down, we can see finally at the bottom, uh, we've got our neighbor here listed. So we can see our neighbor, what channel it's on, what its power is, the sensitivity receive uh, thresholds for for that guy as well. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and let this run for a few minutes and give us some additional and basically run this command again and kind of look at our TX power offset level uh, after some time has passed. All right, so I'm back. I've uh, reran the command. I had to log back in. My my uh, SSH session session did time out, but I logged back in uh, and we reran the get auto cell command. And jumping right down into the radio state, we can automatically see that our TX power is now 30 which means this is now 15 dB and our TX offset, uh, we went all the way to seven. I, I suppose that it'll keep going um, a few more. So we should get, we should go down two more levels and try to, it should hit the full nine, but we're still not gonna be within the sensitivities that we've defined just cause of how close these are. But if we also look down at the neighbor, we can see our TX power here is 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 decreased as well. So we went from scrolling up here a little bit, oh, too far. So scrolling up here, I'm highlighting the, the this is our this was our first discovery of the neighbor we saw a uh, TX power at 38 and now if we look at it we've got the TX power of 30 
So that looks good. I mean, it, it, TX power or auto cell sizing is reducing the TX power and trying to get us so we are not talking as loudly at each other. Um, we're going to also take a look at uh, some syslog commands uh, to see if we can't determine um, some additional information from those. So I had mentioned early on in the configuration that I went ahead and changed the debug level to seven. And we can see that outlined here under syslog level seven of the config. So all I should have to do to be able to get access to these is just run git syslog log. And we should be able to see all of the cool stuff that is happening within um, these neighbor exchanges for auto cell sizing. And I'm trying to find one specifically so you can see uh, where the power step is occurring. Um, just scroll around here in these and here we go so I'm gonna highlight here found the strong neighbor and so we're seeing our strong neighbor here and then you can see the next entry is um, mentioning our, our new power offset so TX power offset changed from 7 to 8 so I think last time we looked at this it was 7 but in this log it just stepped up to 8 and if we were to run get auto cell WLAN 33 again, we would see that our power offset again was eight. So utilizing the logs and utilizing these auto cell commands uh, can give you a pretty good idea of what is happening with your APs, which what power levels they are actually using uh, and, and how they're coming to those calculations. That's all we have for this one. I do thank you for joining us and hope that you will join us again for future video content. Thank you.